And let's see if Gonzaga has gets a good shot right here. See if they run with a sharp execution. Bolden, a blocking foul call. Bolden will go to the free throw line. Knudsen thought he had position, but instead he's called for the foul. That is his fourth. Good drive. I like the hesitation dribble right there. He reads and then explodes in. That's a good call. Knutson was still moving, but the hesitation dribble right there freed him up an open lane. Bolden's up to 23 points. And he's now got 990 for his career. So Bolden closing in, um, becoming the next Bulldog to reach a thousand points for his career. Fargo already went over a thousand points earlier on this season, and Josh Heitfeld is on the verge of going over a thousand points as well. Yeah, and you look at them offensively, they allow the game to get, they allow their points to come off the flow of the game. Tries again, and again he can't hit from the foul line. Bolden on a hit ahead, and backs it up. Gonzaga has control of this game. They're getting out and they're running. The pilots have cut them off. They'll move the ball around, try to get a good shot, and then they get back to the defensive end at work. Sigma with a touch foul up top on day. Now, you know something that's interesting, Bob, for a lot of young players, as they're going into the one and one, that's good for, for Gonzaga. They've got to hit these free throws, though, because it's been iffy for them coming down the stretch. But a lot of players allow their offense to control their game. If they're scoring points, they're playing well. That hasn't been the case for Gonzaga. They've been focused in. They can't hit the front end, and Gray almost took it away. That's Rivio didn't realize that Stephen Gray was right behind him. And, and talking about Rivio, I know you've said multiple times here in the second half that he's been patient, lets the game come to him, doesn't force things. At the same point, though, he had 17 points in the first half and hasn't scored in the second half. A deep three hit as Stoll hits a triple, but doesn't Portland need Rivio to do something offensively in the second half to have a realistic chance to pull the comeback? Not when they're making shots. Not when Campbell makes shots. Not when. Portland is hanging around with 521 to go. Luke Sigma averaging six points a game. He struggled to find his shot here in the second half, but you can still see the resemblance, not just physically, but also in the game of Luke Sigma and his dad, Jack, who was a Sonics legend back in the day. At that high arc and release point, watch his son kind of shoots it with him up over top of his head. But Jack was something special. He was comfortable in the paint. A big fella. Coming from the Midwest, made a career out here in Seattle. Well, yeah, Seattle. There we go. They moved now. <laughs> <laughs> like, gee whiz. Luke Sigma with 10 points and five rebounds. and. He had a couple of big offensive rebounds in the first half to keep possessions alive for Portland and talking to Eric Reveno about him. And I guess it's just in the blood or in the genes, right? He said he's one of those special rebounders. He just has a nose for the ball that you can't teach. I guess he called him one of those go get it type kids where you don't have to coach him to rebound. You just tell him go get it. Yeah, some players ask permission to go get the rebound. He's not one of them. He has a good instinct for the ball. One of the big statistics we were going to track tonight was Gonzaga and how overall they would defend tonight. And Portland has shot the ball pretty well, 43%. But it is still the pilot's ability to shoot from three that has kept them in the game. Yeah, and both, both teams are playing to their strengths. The length and the athletic ability of Gonzaga. And remember, they're one of the bigger teams in their conference. And their front line could compete with anybody in the nation just from a physical standpoint. Good ball movement, good patience. Downs can't hit from three, though. Offensive rebound, though, run down by Gray. I like Stephen Gray let with the flow of the game. And then Austin Day hits a three 
Second chance points for Gonzaga. Well, Austin Davis scoring. High felt before he got in foul trouble with scoring. Pargo, Gray, they, they can score in five positions. Nice layoff that time from Stolga Smelders. And a whistle in the backcourt as the ball rolls out to midcourt. And for a second, Jeremy Pargo's team kind of squaring off with the official Jim Barnowski. I didn't see the ball roll to midcourt. I thought for a second Pargo had said one of the magic words. No, no, no. Smelders actually threw it at Austin Day and it rolled off his knee. But you look at Gonzaga again. They've got the game day crew coming in Saturday to play against Memphis. But they're so focused on this game. And they had to be the three keys for Gonzaga. And they've done it so far. They had to be dialed in mentally. Pargo had to have influence on this game. And they had to guard the three-point line and transition defense. They've guarded it. Portland still gets their shots, but they're still up by nine. Peter Meyer called for his fourth foul. So this is a one and one for Gray. That's team foul number nine on Portland. Gonzaga with only five. Fouls here in the second half. Ray can't hit the front end though. Here comes Rivio, still scoreless in the second half. Now for a three-point shooting team, this is only three possessions, and they've been missing shots. Peter Meyer, 4-3, yeah. hits again. Bob is like clockwork. And again, if they get close, the pressure comes to Gonzaga. This crowd is getting excited. You gotta hit your free throws. felt muscles his way inside, can't. Get it to go, but then Austin Day again. <laughs> a second chance points and points in the paint. Well, that's left. That's left. Stall was underneath there, a little six foot five guy, but you got a seven foot green span in Austin Day. Rivio fades away. An air ball. That was a force. Stephen Gray plays well off of Pargo as well as Matt Bolden. They don't occupy the same space. They can bomb away from the three-point line or drive in. This is a very good Gonzaga team. Shot clock down to 11, and old-school style Josh Heitfeld off the window. 17 games in double figures now for Heitfeld this year. And a turnover. T.J. Campbell basically just gave it away. Ray wearing it down. They, again, for the pilots, they're giving you everything they have. They haven't gone deep into their bench. So you've got five guys that are six guys that are having the bulk of their minutes. Late in the game, two minutes and 50 se seconds left. That'll happen. Backdoor cut for Bolden. And Gonzaga starts to put on the second half clinic. What's the saying? Like in, even in yo-yo, rock the baby. <laughs> you can rock the baby and <laughs> put this thing to sleep. Bolden ties a career high with 26 as Portland calls their last timeout. Josh Heifelt is comfortable facing the basket. Soft touch from the big guy, good elevation. And then you have unselfish play. You're going to see a backdoor cut right here off the dribble. Good hands by Bolden. Slowly making separation. Excellent job by the pilots. The local fans got their money's worth today, but eventually talent, organized talent, will wear you down. All five Gonzaga starters in double figures. They're a team that averages a little over 78 points a game, but with 234 tonight remaining, they're already up to 85. And they are basically either number one or number two in the West Coast Conference, up and down in every major statistic. Yeah, now, now for Gonzaga, realistically, to me, they still have a donut when it comes off the backboard. <laughs> when you, you got a rebound and you're going for a national championship.